Hey friends, it's Brittany at Ink and Papyrus. How are you? Thanks so much for joining me today. I have a fun little project planned for us. Look at this cute little folio I made. Okay, I wanted to share this with you. This is so much fun and I think this would go well as a small like, travel journal by itself or as an accompaniment to a larger journal you're working on. Here's the closure. It's just twine with a button, a wrap around. Okay, this is a single signature journal. Again, it's more like a folio, um, so it could be its own little standalone small journal, or it could be um, pinned into a larger journal you're working on. I have a couple charms here. I think this is going to be like a design kind of uh, vintage fabric style journal. You're going to love this. It only requires a few basic supplies. It has a single signature. It's reinforced with some ribbon. So this is so easy. I want to make a old timey romantic themed one of these folios with you guys. Um, and really the process is so simple. Okay, first decide how large you want this to be. Um, I am going to cut off just a couple of inches. Just otherwise, obviously, this would be very, very long. So I think I'm going to cut off uh, maybe two inches. And this is going to be a sort of travel size journal. It's going to be a long and skinny one. Okay, so a couple of basic folds. So we're going to fold this in half. Okay, and grab yourself a bone folder if you have one. This makes life so much easier. So we're first going to fold this in half. try and get a good fold because you're going to be folding this a couple of times and if it's off you know if they're a little bit off with every fold you're going to end up like it might be a problem because then you'll end up a few um, little offs will end up into like looking crooked okay so we folded it once in half now I want you to Bring this over maybe about a quarter of an inch, not quite. See this? Okay, and we're going to fold it again. Once you and this is actually easier for me because this pattern, this uh, page has a pattern with lines already on it. So now you should have two folds. So you'll have what looks like a little spine. Okay, a really little spine because remember this is just going to be one signature folio. Okay, now I want you to crease it right where we left off. So you should already be there. Okay. Let's crease it real good. This little flap you have sticking out, I want you to fold it back over onto itself. So fold this over, back over the journal. Okay, and try and get it like nice and close right up on 
this first page here or you know what I'm saying like try and get the fold right in that little crease And I may have neglected to mention, I recommend you use have pretty heavy cardstock for this. Um, you can use obviously whatever theme or design you would like. Um, if you're using a blank cardstock, that's totally fine. Go ahead and feel free to decorate it. Um, but you really want it to be pretty heavy duty because we're using this as a standalone journal. It needs to have a little bit of oomph to it because we're all we're doing is reinforcing the spine we're not layering anything over it nothing to make it any stronger so you really want to make sure it's pretty heavy duty better okay i think we're pretty straight on right there okay now i want you to get a piece of fabric um or trim applique something that you really like that is gonna serve as the kind of opening flap, okay? I'm trying to decide between this and this. Maybe I'll go with this. So you can totally glue this down if you would like. I'm gonna sew mine. Just make sure whatever you do, that whatever fabric or trim you're using, you do not overlap. Do you see that little crease there? Make sure you do not overlap that crease or else you're gonna have a very hard time folding this back over. just sewn and now we're just going to trim off any little remaining bits we have. Okay now I want you to gather a few pages that you would like to put in your little folio. I'm using a mix of some faux lace digital principles, some old vintage papers, some digital rose theme photos, tracing paper, maybe a sheet or two of vellum, yeah, and other good things like that. I would recommend probably only incorporating maybe 8 to 12 pages. This is going to be a pretty small journal and we're going to only have a really small spine to work with. Okay, definitely less pages if you plan on heavily decorating it. Okay, as we're prepping to get our papers ready, make sure you go along them with this bone holder or something like that where you can really flatten these out. It makes a huge difference um, and really adds space. If you want to know more about how I decide what papers to incorporate into my journal signatures, um, and just kind of all about different considerations you may want to make when you decide how to put together a signature. Um, I will link uh, my latest video on this above and in the description box. Check it out. It's good stuff. Okay. So we are going to cut our papers down to size. Okay, shuffle them how you like them. And then my favorite way to do this is to create a template, okay? So I'm gonna take one piece of paper out of my signature. Get yourself a pen or a pencil. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure this up against our folio. We're going to find out exactly the longest that our paper, our papers can be and the absolute widest our papers can be. So I'm going to trim in just a little bit. I 
and I'm going to make a another mark to signify exactly how tall these can be. And I usually undershoot just a little bit. Okay. So now I'm going to cut down the template. And then now we will cut, after that, we will cut all the rest of our papers down. Okay, now we know exactly how long our papers can be. We have our template created and we're just gonna check and it fits in the folio perfectly. Okay, so now we're gonna cut down all the rest of our papers and usually I break them into thirds or so just so my paper cutter can handle it. Okay. We're gonna place all of the papers inside our template. Wise, they're obviously all okay. Height-wise, we're definitely going to need to cut some down. And it's kind of a bummer because this lace piece I really like is not going to look right. It doesn't have all the edges and the grooves if it's cut down on a straight line. This does not fit. So you know what we're gonna do? I don't wanna cut this down. I'm gonna create a little pocket out of this. I'm gonna actually fold this up. And I am going to glue. This is one of my favorite things to do with pockets that do not fit. There are plenty, or um, pages that do not fit rather. If I don't want to cut them up, I'll make pockets or um, flips out of them. There are a whole host of things you can do. Maybe we ought to make a video about that. But in the meantime, so I definitely didn't want to cut this down. So I'm just making a pocket out of it. No sweat there. Okay. I'm going to fold this back in. Okay. Okay, so all of our papers with much difficulty are cut to size. Okay, now we want to let's put these scraps aside. We may want to use them to decorate later. Get all these little odds and ends out of the way. So now I just want you to rearrange your pages however you see fit, okay? Because in a second we're going to be binding them in. Make sure you have your cover page and everything else as you would like. Um, I want to think I want to decorate our first page, so I'm going to get I'm going to put a blank page as our first page and. Other things you may want to think about, like this doily, I love this, I love the contrast. The lace, I think looks good up against this uh, more vintage, uh, vintage looking cream paper. I 
don't mind if my papers kind of overhang a little bit. If you do, you may want to get put your wider pages first and then work your way in that way. Whatever you like. Okay, so I think I have my signature how I want it to go in my folio. Okay, this is my favorite trick. Here's what we want to do. We want to clip our pages all together so they don't move. So once you have them situated how you want, put those paper clips in. These jumbo paper clips are the best thing ever. Okay. Now, if you want to be fancy and measure these out, you can. Since I'm only doing one signature, I don't really care about measuring so much. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So this is our spine that we created from our three folds. Okay, we're gonna wanna make three dots along this spine. Okay, since my paper is already lined, it's easier for me. You may want to do this with a ruler. I'm gonna do it just by freehand. So I'm just making three dots. And this is where I'm gonna punch my signatures. Actually, right there. One, two, three. Okay. So we're gonna put in our signatures in with a three hole pamphlet stitch. I'm using my crocodile too. I'm gonna look at it from the side and just punch my holes. your papers okay and you're gonna line it up with the, the spine of your paper just like this and I want you to make a little hash mark at the three holes so a little hash mark here a little hash mark here and a little hash mark here okay make sure you know which is top and bottom this is the top, this is the bottom, this is the top, this is the bottom. Now, we're gonna come along and punch three holes in our papers. We're just gonna punch a hole right exactly where we made those hash marks. So I want you to get some cording or some embroidery floss. Okay. And we are going to measure just like this. We're gonna go from the bottom of the page to the top of the page is one. And then I'm just going to do this three times. So if this is one, I'm just gonna put my pinky where my thumb was, or my pinch this where my thumb was. That's two. That's three. See how hard that measuring was? <laughs> three lengths of the page, boom. That'll give you plenty. It'll give you plenty, especially if it'll give you a little extra, uh, if you wanna put little charms um, in the middle of the signature. Um, it'll allow you a little extra uh, cording to tie beads or charms or whatever else you want to put on it off. Okay, now um, I'm going to reinforce my spine 
Now I have some fabric and actually I probably should have punched the holes after I do this, but that's okay. So we reinforced her spine, given a little bit extra durability. You should still easily be able to see the creases of the paper. Now, the smart thing to do would have been to reinforce the fabric first and then punch the holes, but I did not. So I'm going to punch through this again. And if it doesn't perforate the fabric entirely, We'll be going, I'm going to be securing these signatures with a three hole pamphlet stitch. So I'll be perforating through the fabric anyways with the needle that I'm using. This seems to be doing okay. I'm punching right where those holes are. Not a big deal. We have our holes and yes. Okay. See, sometimes you make mistakes or do things probably a little out of order that, you know, ideally you would have done another way, but it's okay. Just find a way around it and keep on keeping on. It's not the end of the world. All right, so let's take our cording, large, needle, whatever you use to get your signatures in, and we're going to do a three hole pamphlet stitch. We're just going in through that, and remember, make sure you know what's top bottom on your folio, make sure you know what is top and bottom on your signature pages. Do a second looky loo, yep. <clears throat> okay, three hole pamphlet stitch, we're going to go in through the middle up through the top, out through the bottom, and in through the middle. Okay? So let's get this out so we can bind our signatures in. It's so easy, guys. All right. in through the middle, up through the top, ah, oh, up through the top, sorry, get okay, up through the top. And down through the bottom. And for our last, last little step, we're going to go in through the middle again. See that? Perfect. 
Okay, we want to make sure that we're cinched down nice and tight and it's secure and we're just going to tie a knot. I'm going to go right over left and left over right. Right over left. And left over right. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna leave these hanging. I might wanna put a charm on them. If you don't wanna do anything else to this, um, you can go ahead and just cut it right down at the knot right or not at the knot right above the knot okay i'm gonna leave myself some tails i may want to attach a couple of things to the bottom when i'm done okay so we have our folio look how exciting you may want to crease or kind of score your spine again just like i'm doing here but yeah so I want to do a couple other things before we get to decorating. So first of all, um, I want to do the twine closure, just like I did here. So grab yourself some twine and a button and we'll do that now. Um, mine is very simple. I just sewed the twine to this, my little flap here you want to be able to wrap it around a couple of times so do that before you trim it off that's the easiest way to measure without measuring see so all i'm doing here is just taking that twine and um putting it up on the flap just like that and now I'm just going to sew over it a couple of times to secure it. So I just made a couple passes with the sewing machine back and forth over that piece of twine. Okay, and now I am going to... I love this. I have a decorative button here. Actually, I have a couple. But I'm going to use these as our closure. You may have to, the twine is kind of thick. You may have to use a needle or something like that to help get this in through the buttonhole. Found this really pretty button I think I like even more. Alright, you will work. Okay, so I'm just gonna tie off a couple of knots here. This is why I said give yourself plenty of extra room when before, like when you cut your twine. Leave yourself plenty of extra. Okay, we want the button to not be able to move. Okay, I think I also want to tie a little button or a little um, knot above it because I don't really want the button moving down sliding all over the place either it's supposed to work like this so we have a little fold there it's going to sit nice over top of that and then 
just like that. Love, love, love. Okay, so some other fun little additions. I really love this trim and I was thinking I would put it along the front and the back. Just adding a little bead in the um, on the cording that I used to um, tie off or bind in my signatures. I do not like this at all. <laughs> this front, this, the inside, or the back page. I love the roses. The plaid stripes are not doing it for me, especially with this theme. So I definitely want to cover these up. Since we're doing vintage, old timey Valentines, well, that was my intention. I was thinking I could cover it with sewing pattern, though it would probably require a couple of layers. Um, I also, I have these digital images that I really like. I got my handy dandy pages here, and I'm going to cut a couple off, or cut a couple out of this book, and we are going to collage that to back these um, to back these other images, we are gluing onto this. Oh, already cut. Okay, that should be good.
Okay, much better, much better. Okay, I'm really liking the direction this is going in. I wasn't so sure for a second there. I'm just trimming some little excess bits. Okay, I know you may be wondering, well, why did you glue those down completely? Like, why don't you leave a pocket? Well, I think I am going to create some lace pockets in the front, the front and the back cover. I'm going to cut this to size. Okay, I'm gonna make a lace pocket for the front and the back. I'm not sure. We could make a little, I have some really pretty fabric pocket, like fabric. We could make a fabric pocket. I was actually thinking maybe like a fabric ruffled belly band. That might look really cool. Since we're ruffling it, we're probably going to need maybe two strips. Okay. Now, both of these I am going to, well, actually we can, why don't we do the belly, uh, the ruffled belly band with glue. So I'll show you how to do this without sewing. We are just going to glue the very first part. So put a little bit of glue here. Ah. Okay, just to get it started. So to secure the very edge of the fabric. Okay, now we're gonna put a little stream of glue there and ruffle and some glue and ruffle and some glue and ruffle and some glue and ruffle okay now we need another strip. Okay, and you want to stop just short of the crease here so it doesn't interfere with that.
Okay, now we're going to put a string of glue. And I'm reaching, just reaching under here. I'm not undoing any of the ruffles. I'm just picking up, I know, some glue bled under here. And if you don't, you're not going to be able to slip anything under here. It's all going to be glued on. Okay, you're going to take your, see how the glue kind of bleeds through a little? That's why I say, like, I really much prefer to sew these, but you can still make it work. Okay. Right before the crease, we're going to put a line of glue here, and we're just going to secure the ruffle to this. So you should be able to slip things in and out of this. Okay, friends, I was thinking about putting together a cluster to, um, obviously when I sewed this lace pocket, um, you can see a little bit of the, the stitching here. That doesn't really bother me that much. I mean, obviously we're going to be able to, we're going to fold this over. But, I don't know, I still think it would look really nice if there was something up front. So, I still kind of want to do the vintage, old-timey, romantic theme. So, I was just thinking of what might look nice on the cover as a cluster. So, I was just playing around with some different items. Thinking what might look really nice. And I was gonna, I was sort of layering the cream colored paper with uh, white paper. This is the lace we, faux lace we cut off of that page when we were trimming our signatures down. I just want to kind of make this pop a little bit. What do you think? I am really liking that. Okay. I'm just going to get my stapler. And we are going to staple this together. going to cover that staple by gluing on the butterfly. Plenty of glue. Okay, now I'm going to glue down the cluster. I think, do I want it like this? Make sure we stay out of the way of the fold. Yeah, I think I'm going to want it like so we're going to put a little bit of glue on each of these pieces. Beautiful. Okay. I also, I wanted to embellish the um, inside of the butterfly too. I have some of these stick-ons. I think a pearl would look really, really nice. That's probably way too much glue, but you know.
Okay. All right, I am really liking this. I'm gonna hold this down for a minute. Oh wow, this is gonna be really, really pretty, guys. Okay, so let's take a quick peek and try not to mess up our little cluster. So here's what we have, our little folio slash mini journal with one signature, a fabric reinforced spine with trim decorating along the fabric. We have a cluster out front, our little folio flip here that goes just like this with our twine closure. Oh my gosh, what do you think guys? I think this is absolutely darling. Okay, let's take a peek inside. We have, I think, like 10 or 12 pages. We have a lace pocket and a ruffle, ruffled belly band in the back. I like this so much better than that other the ugly side of the cardstock we were stuck with before. And we have a lot of blank pages that need some decoration, but that will come in due time. I think in one of our next videos, we are gonna work on some old tiny Valentine embellishments that'll go really well with this lace vintage cupid love kind of theme so i cannot wait to do that with you guys look for that in an upcoming video but in the meantime i am so pleased with how this came out um if you enjoyed this please like and subscribe my videos come out on monday and fridays and tune in for an upcoming video where we bedazzle this and make some awesome embellishments for this so i will see you guys the next time